Hi, I'm Bernd Nussbaum from microbeat.co.uk. I wasn't around last week, so I'll do just a very brief recap on what we had last week, given this week wasn't really big in terms of news. Obviously, we had the Fed and the ECB last week. Well, the Fed is being happy with uh, higher yields. The ECB obviously is not, which already tells you something about euro dollar, I would say. The Fed obviously remains dovish, uh, as expected. Powell, his pragmatic self, as expected also. He still feels people haven't really adjusted to Powell yet, which is a big surprise, because he's been the same since 2018. This is not Yellen, this is not Bernanke. There are no sort of twists or turns or, or spin. He says what it is, which is really watch data. That's what he keeps saying. So for the market to believe they're behind the curve, I think is wrong. Uh, the market is doing the job with taking yields higher. So there's a bit of a repricing of risk going on. And I think in the next three to six months, depending on what the data is doing, the Fed will adjust as it has done in the last few years. So I think the market makes a bit of too big of a story. Uh, uh, you know, one of the two is going to be right. The other is wrong. Either the market has to adjust uh, uh, later in the year or, or the Fed. So I don't think it's uh, such a big story. But what I do believe is that the genie is out of the bottle. Yields going to stay high. I think the optimism for Q2 and Q3, especially in the US, is, is justified. And I think that is what I have a few slides later to just sort of show wh where we stand on that front. Don't forget the Fed is a super tanker, meaning adjustments happen slowly. The market wants to see instant gratifications. So it's a bunch of speedboat drivers, and that's just not how policy works. So I think the market should just calm down a little bit. Europe, obviously, different issues, uh, vac vaccine sort of nightmare. Uh, third wave of COVID. So obviously there's quite a different story in Europe and the ECB not being happy with yields being pushed higher. So again, we see divergences and that's the sort of stuff we look for, the stuff we want to trade. On the first slide, and probably that one explains why I have been bullish a dollar for since the start of the year, and that's not going to change. This just shows the US versus the G9, strong performance from the US. So, I mean, this is something the dollar will ultimately have to uh, uh, look at, and I think the dollar will have to react. And I always assume Q1 to be complicated. I think Q2 and Q3 is going to be a lot clearer, and the dollar will do just fine. On the next slide, even more interesting, this is sort of an overlay from Philly Fed versus China manufacturing. So even there, it seems currently the US might actually even outperform China. Probably the reason why banks like Morgan Stanley actually really call for a US outperformance across the board. Again, very important for the dollar later uh, in the year. The next slide, this is Euro dollar. Uh, we talked about this one, 1945 level. Uh, we had a bit of flip-flop around it, but finally it did break. We did break the blue line, which, which is the 200-day moving average. And we sort of slowly start to grind lower. I don't think the dollar is explosive at this, this stage, but I have no doubt whatsoever that the euro is going to continue lower. The, DX, uh, the ADX, that's the black line down on the indicators, picked up again the first time after running flat for two weeks. That just tells me that the next uh, lag down is about to start. Uh, dollar index on the next slide, uh, we close above the 200 day moving average also uh, last night, uh, getting closer to that 93 pivot. So now that we are really firmly above 92, I think the market has to start to consider that the dollar is going to go up. So the dollar bears or the dollar shorts really have to look out and probably start to consider using dips in the dollar to start covering shorts and may even have to start embracing that the dollar actually could go higher. I have no doubt that the DXY is going to go up to 96, 97, 98 in the next uh, one to two or three months. Last but not least, Turkey back in the headlines. Erdogan has been quiet for a while. Now he sacked the head of the central bank again after he hiked rates another 200 basis points to 90%. So that's when the fuse broke uh, with Erdogan. He fired the head of the CV. And you see the reaction. We had like a 15% move in dollar Turkey uh, uh, on Sunday night into Monday. After that, the new central bank head is an advocate of low interest rates. So the market just has to bail out again on long Turkey position. And it just shows it's it's just not a place to be as long as the central bank independence is questioned. Next rate meeting be interesting. If the new head is going to cut rates, the Turkey misery is just about to continue. This is it from me. Thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye. <music>